MDS slash MPN overlap disorders are a group of diseases that originate in the bone marrow. And what I tell my patients um, who come in with uh, MDS slash MPN disorders is that the bone marrow is really the factory where we make all of our blood. And this factory is actually constantly working to, to turn over cells that have died just because of normal wear and tear. And what happens in, in these disorders is that the coordination between the rest of the body and the bone marrow is disrupted. And it's disrupted because that, uh, the leukemic cells, the, the blood cells, have acquired genetic mutations that sort of reprogram them to no longer listen to the cues that your body is sending it. And in the case of MDS slash MPNs, you really have two problems. On the one hand, you make too many of a certain type of cells. For example, in a MDS slash MPN known as chronic myelomonocytic leukemia, or CMML, you make too many monocytes. But on the other hand, um, in the same patient, they may, may not, they may not make enough um, red blood cells or platelets. And so you have this sort of paradox in the bone marrow that gives these diseases their name, MDS slash MPNs. MDSF is a, um, a type of myelodysplastic syndrome in which the bone marrow is heavily scarred. Um, and that scarring is similar to that seen in a related disease called myelofibrosis. The difference in MDS is that there still remains evidence of the MDS disease in the bone marrow, but the fibrosis in the bone marrow, that scarring, tells doctors that the disease is probably going to behave more aggressively than, say, an MDS without the scarring or fibrosis. The current treatments for MDS slash MPN overlaps really mirror that of MDS itself. The one distinction, however, between overlap syndromes and MDS when it comes to their management is that we generally use a symptom-directed approach. What does that mean? A symptom-directed approach is essentially asking what set of symptoms is, is um, most predominant in your patient or in you. Um, and this, the treatments that we use are targeted or personalized for those symptoms. For example, um, if uh, patients are having uh, uh, issues with anemia or low platelet counts, which constitutes more of the MDS component of their disease, um, we generally favor drugs like Videza or 5-Azacetidine, uh, uh, as well as dacogen or decidabine. On the other hand, if patients are having symptoms related to their high white blood cell counts or their myeloproliferative component, uh, then we favor what we call cytoreductive agents. And the goal of these drugs is to reduce the white blood cell count and the symptoms that really are bothering these patients. And that can include things like unexplained fever, weight loss, night sweats, uh, enlarged spleen, even itching. All of these can be um, uh, improved by cytoreductive agents. These agents can include hydroxyurea, uh, conventional chemotherapy, low-dose ERASI, and many others. And it really is a discussion between the patient and the doctor to find the right drug for them. The important distinction between treatments in MDS and MDSF is really based on the increased risk MDSF puts you in. Um, and so in myelodysplastic syndromes, it is, it is known that patients with higher risk disease benefit from treatment with a drug called Videza or 5-Azacytidine. Um, this drug actually has shown to make people with high-risk MDS live longer compared to those that received other treatments. And so because MDSF in general is a high-risk MDS, the treatment of choice is, by extension, 5-azacytidine, whether patients have symptoms or not. One of the exciting advances in um, uh, myeloid leukemias in general and overlap syndromes and, and myelofibrosis specifically is that we now know 
what the genetic underpinnings are of the disease. We know that there are mutations that happen recurrently. We know that these mutations are important for the disease initiation as well as for estimating prognosis. And we're now learning that many of these mutations can actually be targeted with drugs. And in fact, there are clinical trials now testing drugs that directly target genetic mutations which occur in these diseases. And I think that is probably the uh, most exciting advance in this group of diseases.